Welcome to another episode of the Halo Effect podcast and I'm super stoked to introduce to you who I'm going to call Joey the Nomad but his actual name if you can't see him right now he's waving um, his actual <laughs> name is Joey Odell and we were just chatting before actually hitting record and I'm just like this dude is a soul brother didn't know why I was connecting to him until I actually touched base saw his face started speaking to him and it's just that feeling you get with someone where you're like oh, I feel like we could chat for hours so forgive us if this just rolls on for rambles but it's going to be a ball of fun and I'm looking forward to where it's going to go so um, without further ado I'm not even going to give you an introduction Joey I'm going to let you tell your story yourself and just who the hell are you? Where have you come from? Why do you do what you do? And how are you such a big legend? Okay, um, good questions. <laughs> um, so originally, like, um, I'm not from Perth, as you'll start to tell by my accent, um, it kind of morphs as, um, as I start talking. I've done a, a fair bit of traveling in my life. Um, but I'm from Manchester in the UK originally, um, moved over to Perth about eight years ago. Um, and I've not actually lived in the UK in Manchester for uh, since I was about 21, I think it was when I left. Um, so I've been traveling for a fair amount of years before I landed in Perth. Um, but yeah, the, the reason my accent's so so strange, it's like an amalgamation of lots of different um, things that I picked up along the way. Um, I don't know if anybody that listens to this has ever been to Manchester, but we speak really fast and uh, we've got a bit of a twang to our accent and it's kind of hard to understand us sometimes. So on my travels, this was a problem um, for a lot of people and I got sick of repeating myself. So I kind of just slowed my voice down and developed this sort of, it's almost like a, a radio presenter's accent. Um, it is. So can, are you good at accents though? Are you good at other accents other than what we're hearing now, which is the the more. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's funny. Um, I used to, like we, we always had a talent show at school and it's that's what always what I used to do is just an impersonation of someone at a talent show. Um, it used to be somebody that nobody ever knew because I only just <laughs> impersonated people from the TV or flight like programs that my mum watched. But um, yeah, the, the, the whole um, play on voices thing was, um, yeah, funny. I've never been asked that question before, but yes. yeah, it was. <laughs> Brilliant. Feel free to let them come out in this podcast, in this episode. Yeah. Okay. Sweet. Well, um, I think we've already jumped off track about something yeah. already. <laughs> it's it's going to be interesting. But anyway, so yeah, I came to Perth about seven or eight years ago. Um, and there's a whole mental health journey that um, that leads alongside of that. Um, and from, from coming here, it's like, and this is kind of a, a new realization. I was just talking to Lauren, just um, like we said, we're off, we're off air. Um, I went on a little bit of a mushroom journey um just about a week ago and had a little bit of a realization there that my life is sort of built up into these seven year blocks and this is something somebody told me but it only just kind of hit that like every seven years there's sort of a massive transformation within life and like it was pretty much around the 27 28 years old that I moved to Australia and it's like 28 is obviously a divisible number of seven if that's the right words um and now I'm 35, so it's like it's turn, it's time for my next block of seven, which is is really interesting. So this this whole last seven years has just been like trying to figure out how to settle down and to 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 be at peace with myself. And the traveling thing all around the world was amazing, but it was it was more of a, a realization that I was running from myself as opposed to actually embracing having fun and traveling like you know like people do, but you know, I've, being around so many travelers, I think that's, um, I think we're, we're all running from something um, at the end of the day. I think it's something that we all have in common as, um, as travelers. But um, yeah, it's, um, it's been a journey um, the past seven years. And there's been a lot of realizations, a lot of acceptance, a lot of uh, digging into the dark, deep past of um, where I came from. And it's, yeah, it's, it's nice to be I don't know whether this this whole block of seven thing is a real thing or, or what, but it's nice to be moving into like a a new chapter with with what I'm doing now as well. It's uh, it's pretty cool, dude. I think that's um, I've actually been talking to people recently about the seven year 
life thing like almost everyone that I've spoken to which is no coincidence mm. that we're chatting today I'm 28 mm. my partner's like <clears throat> six years younger than me so he's like just gone through that seven year um transition I guess and then mm. um it's really really fascinating and then when you talk in steps of like the chakras and all of that I know that that's something that you're recently kind of getting into and probably understanding on more experiencing rather than intellectually understanding it. It's like there's levels in that as well that you have to break through. And um, I'm curious with the mushroom trip though, whether, you know, that exposed to you the seven different layers and that's when you found EP7 or Empowered for Purpose, which is the seven steps, which is where you um, do your coaching. Is Am I saying yeah. that correctly? Do I understand that? Yeah, yeah, that's right. You got you got the, the coaching thing nailed down, right? Um, yeah, that I mean, the whole seven thing. It's you know, I'm I, I I'm one of those that's guilty of going down like wormholes and rabbit holes and looking into things too deeply. Like I've been down the whole numerology path way too deeply and started looking into that. I mean, but um, that, I mean, because the whole mushroom thing, because it was only a week ago, it's so new. It was just right. like um. I guess where that that whole seven thing comes in it was almost like it was the clearing that i needed to rid myself of the the old version of myself that wasn't necessarily representing me in the way that i needed to be represented into this this new block of seven years if, if that's what you want to call it mm. but it's you know if, if you remove the numbers and, and not put any you know sort of identity on it it's like the way I look at it is, you know, I have a massive potential to to change the way I'm doing things and to change what I'm doing and to to really make a difference in this world. But mm -hmm. there was something within me that was pulling me back and holding me back, saying, "You're not ready for this. This isn't your time. This is, you know, you're not worthy enough for this. You're not, you know, this isn't right for you. You know, this is, you know, it's a very negative way of thinking. But mm -hmm. you know, I know it's very new. It's only been a week ago, but since that experience i've just been so clean so clear so calm so full of love so full of like mm -hmm. appreciation for for what's coming and it's yeah it's I'm, I'm excited like it's it was a really really clearing experience i'm excited for you man i think it's um the the psychedelic stuff it's when you use it as sacred medicine and use it in mm -hmm. that way of wanting to move deeper within yourself versus using an external substance or what others might call a drug to just mm. do it. It's like, no, that's actually allowed you to clear something out that you didn't necessarily know you were holding, whether it was from childhood, which a lot of things are. I know a lot of the background mm. with your depression and even those dices with suicide that you were saying to me as well, was like coming from that abandonment feeling more for more so from your father's side like that masculine mm. energy so like I'd love to know what healing you've done for yourself um to get to where you are now like that point of where you you kind of realize that you were running from yourself and realize that you couldn't really do that to where you were like shit like I need to actually do some inner work and and what that looks like now like how do you continually keep yourself grounded and in check yeah it's a really really good question and um look like there's been a, a lot of shit that's happened in my life like um you know I, I used to look back at it and say you know it's like oh it's just this just happened and then I used to try and compare it to other people and say oh well it's not as bad as this guy and that guy but at the end of the day look I think one of the, the biggest things along the way was realizing, well, you know, these are my things that have happened to me and mm -hmm. that you shouldn't be comparing them to other people. They are my experiences and they've caused whatever trauma they've caused, regardless of, you know, any comparison to anybody else. And I think once, once I, I, I realized that it's like, well, okay, well, you know, it doesn't matter what's happening in the world. If I want to be happier, if I want to, heal myself if I want to move forward in my own life then I need to try and understand what's gone on um I think for the the first part of it the most part was when um when I tried to take my own life was the the first real wake up and gone is like um basically the, the, the short story behind that was um my granddad died funnily enough it was yesterday it was 10 years ago um since he passed away and when he passed away 
it was like he was my dad he was my father figure um my dad um he didn't want to be a part of my life was you know left before I was born um he passed away when I was about five years old so I never got to meet him never got to know him um so that left a massive like hole in my life like um there was a lot of identity questions that came up as along my younger years you know why has my friends got dads and I don't have a dad um and there was a you know my granddad was awesome like unbelievable human being but there was always still that lack of a, a masculine nurturing figure around 24 7 if you know what I mean yeah. and um when my granddad died I just started drinking and at the time it was like I had a choice I was away working away on cruise ships at the time traveling around the world I think I was in somewhere in the Pacific Islands at the time and I, I had the opportunity to go home and go to the funeral but the the opportunity that was there was like well you might not have a job when you you know when you come back so it's just like fuck so there was that choice I had to make and at that time I was definitely not ready to say goodbye I was definitely not I wasn't around any family or anything like that to make a, a, a consciously smart decision so it was just like you know I've been burying shit for 25 years I can bury this no problem so it's just you know just pretend it's not happened because I don't have to deal with it. There's no nobody there. So I just carried on. And then I'm, it was about four or five weeks later, I remember meeting um, this girl. And it's like, <laughs> I probably shouldn't say this because just in case my wife listens. <laughs> but I'll, be, I'll be honest anyway, because it wasn't my wife. Um, like I was working on the, on the ship and this woman walked in. And I just looked up and I was just like, oh, like that like gobsmacked like I don't I'm not going to say love at first sight kind of thing but it was yeah. just like she just took took my breath away yeah. and I was like I gotta get to know this girl yeah. and you know the story goes I did and we ended up in a relationship but what I looking back at things now what I chose to do was to bury all that love and that needed to come out to to you know represent my granddad's life and things mm. I put into this relationship so there was a lot of negative energy into that. And there was a lot of like me wanting to overcome that negative feeling by giving more positive feelings, if that makes sense. Yes. Overcompensating yeah. in a way. Exactly. Yeah. And so I, I buried all my emotions into this relationship and it wasn't maybe about six, seven months after the whole honeymoon period ended that the, the real like pain that I was suffering inside just like came out and I was a fucking asshole to this girl like I ended up moving to Queensland with her um and then I just we just got arguing and I couldn't cope with the way I was feeling I had no friends like she was the only thing I had there mm. and I just I didn't I didn't have a clue what was going on I didn't know this was what I was dealing with at the time I just thought this was a problem within our relationship yeah and I just I treated her like shit until one day I was just decided I've got to go I can't do this anymore yeah. so I just packed my bags and went back to work on cruise ships and, and carried on running away and um that's life on cruise ships for anyone that's ever been on a cruise ship it, it very much is a party lifestyle mm. um lots of drinking even with the crew um below decks we've got our own bar and I was pretty much hitting the bar every single night and um, yeah. one of the nights I remember only because there's so many photos is we we attended a party that was called a d party so you had to come up you had to come to the party dressed in anything that began with a d so me and my pisshead mate that both from manchester thought it was going to be freaking hilarious to go in drag so we went out shopping got ourselves dresses got ourselves wigs makeup and everything and we both got absolutely obliterated like absolutely obliterated drunk but this wasn't you know the party itself was a um a, a one-off sort of thing it happened once a month but yeah. that state that I was in was that yeah. was every night I was you know it just so happened that this time there was there's something to remember because it's a party whereas yeah. that's pretty it's much like acceptable night. right as opposed to oh yeah. shit this is a problem hmm. exactly so it's you know, it, that, that's how it just kept rolling on and rolling on. And um, one night I was in that state, but I was just sat there by myself, just drinking. Mm. Um, and there was a group of friends that I, I had that were sat away from me because I just wanted to be by myself. 
and my paranoid mind at the time was telling me that they were talking about me and saying shit about me because they kept looking over at me who knows what they were actually saying they you know they may have been they may not have been but in my mind they were and um yeah it just really pissed me off um i got into a massive argument with them and then i i went into this like extreme rage and i just sat in my cabin by myself like must have been one two o'clock in the morning i was like this has been like this now for three four months like what the fuck is the point what am i doing oh. i've just crushed a relationship i've ruined something that i really wanted my granddad's passed away i'm stuck in the middle of the fucking ocean just feeling like absolute shit what the fuck is the point in life so i just went and sat on the side of a sat on the side of the ship and you know just looked out and i was like that's it i'm done i've had enough yeah that's it for me now like i didn't want to live anymore it was hard hard to deal with like it's i think i've I've told this story enough times that I, I can bury the feeling each time i talk about it but um through some work i've been doing recently i've been told like not to try and bury the feeling because every time you talk about it and you relive it that emotion comes up and right. then if you bury that feeling you've got to re-deal re with that emotion it's it's I almost yeah, feel was, like the, in a sense, because I, I view the ocean as such a healing space for myself. I, you strike me as like, you, we're probably like the same star signs and all of that kind of stuff. I'm just like, you're <laughs> such a soul brother. But in that sense of like, even the ocean seems like <laughs> revisiting that place to go like, this is where we met. This is where that like time was when I was feeling that way to just kind of meet it head on and just be like, I was wanting to, I don't know what you're wanting to do, whether jumping in there and drowning that level, but it's like the ocean is such a powerful force and reflecting that in nature when it is like, do what you will, like I'm doing what I will, like, and it's just there. And it's just like to even go back to it and go like, thank you for being there. Like either way, it would have, yeah, it would have taken you and it's, it's still there today, which is really cool. Yeah, it's um I have a very unique connection with the ocean. Like yeah. I don't know whether it's because of that experience or well, I suppose it has a, a lot to do with it, but um yeah. traveling at sea for so many years is a, a massive thing for it. But yeah. yeah, like um sitting on the side of the ship, like it's there's not much I remember because I was still absolutely wasted, but mm. there was a clear a clear remembrance that was like obviously you've got this choice now of whether you want to live or die yeah and something told me is like you're not ready for this this you know there's there's a big lesson that i want to share from this that's that came through maybe a couple of months ago yeah um that i'll, I'll get into a little bit later but it, it's that 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 thing was sort of imprinted in me that it's like you're not ready for this something something big is going to come mm. something you meant for something a little bit more than than what you've given to this world so far yeah so it was um yeah, the, the, the next day was the, the day where I was like, all right, well, I obviously had that black and white choice, you know, live or die. And I chose to, that I wanted to live. Now mm -hmm. you're going to make a fucking change, bro. Like now yeah. you've got to do something about it. Don't just sit here and just go, oh yeah. Like, yeah, you, 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 you tried to take your own life. Let's just try and bury that. Like you tried to bury everything else. So it's, um, a case of reaching out to to the like the welfare officer on the ship and you know explaining things which is a it was a bit of a shit experience but um it was yeah that was that to cut a very very long story short um yeah that was that was when i, I first realized that you know I'm, I, I need to do something about my my own mental my mental health we'll need a um a sequel to this episode i feel anyway but, um, <laughs> yeah i'm curious so with uh actually i'll ask this question first which then might lead me to the next one um mm. do you know anything about your father like are you close with your mom did your grandpa talk about him do you know what he was like in terms of um who he Not was as like, a person? i know most people will be watching this on um uh, sorry most people probably listen to this rather than watch on youtube but that's a picture of my dad there oh so, yeah, yeah. That's yep. the only photo I have of him. Wow. I, don't know, I don't know. Don't know very much about him. Um, all I know is that he was a DJ and that he liked horses. Wow. That's pretty much it. Yeah. 
it's so weird because I think horses and I think introvert and then I think DJ and it's extrovert and it's like that weird mix of probably wanting to connect with people but not actually wanting to talk to them and which yeah, yeah I don't it's odd but um yeah because I was thinking like when you were saying that shift happened with that girl that you had that really beautiful energetic connection with initially and then you know that switch in you of like I don't know what's happening within me I just wondered whether that mm. triggered something of like feeling that anger of you know that masculine energy of like I was never told what's happening now and I don't know how I'm meant to be as a partner and all of that kind of stuff mm -hmm. yeah it was um that was hard it was mm. like because I had like honestly I had no idea what was going on I just thought it was just yeah, yeah this is just me just the the fucked up version of me coming out again right yeah, it's like that's what I told myself you know kept relaying to myself every day that I'm fucked up you know, mm. you know it's, it's and that's I, the story I put that tell. on myself mm. and it's like yeah it's you know I'm a fucked up person here's the next fucked up thing that's happened to me so it's like what do I know what to do and um the only real lesson that I, I got from my dad is when serious things happen run right and you know it's that in itself has been a a long journey um I was able to to finally through um a lot of like inner work like forgive him maybe about seven or eight months ago so wow. it's um that's recent yeah I th yeah I thought I'd forgiven him for like it's just like you know it's like that I think that was more of an acceptance of just saying you know it's happened I'm not gonna create any more pain and burden on it but mm. it was really only about six or seven months ago that I was really like wow no you know now I actually I actually forgive him and I just kind of felt this in a sense of love for for who he was and it was a it was a realization of that he was he probably realized with himself that he, he's not he wasn't capable to to be a father and to be mm -hmm. a fatherly figure and that he had probably a lot of his own pain and a lot of his own trauma that was unresolved and that he he couldn't deal with and rather burden my life with that then he he chose to move on and and, and follow his own path yeah. but there's there's obviously two there's two perspectives to take right the first the the initial perspective is like what an arsehole like run that's all you chose to do run so it's like what am I going to learn how to do whenever anything difficult comes about I'm going to run yeah but then going in and, and deep deep and seeing sort of the duality between that and seeing that you know like at the end of the day, I wouldn't be here without him. So I can't yeah. show him anything but love for that. Because he, you know, he, he gave me my life. That's the most precious thing he could possibly give me. Yeah. And if he was to realize that he, he wasn't strong enough to be a dad, then that's okay. Because everybody goes through shit. Everybody deals with problems. Everybody has hard times and suffering. And some of us like me, like I like I experienced with the, the girl I was telling you about. We, we're just not in the right place to be able to sit down and deal with it either because we're not around the right people we don't have the right education we don't have the right tools it's just not the right time in our lives and yeah. you know we we can't you, you can be angry if you want to be angry but at the end of the day it doesn't solve anything the only way you're going to solve those things is to to dig deep and to really understand it a bit more and yeah. you know it's I can only thank my dad for giving me my life that's that's the, the bare beauty of it and I thank your dad for your life so we get to have this conversation mm. as well um thank you yeah and you're a dad yourself which is going to just branch off into another probably little deep chapter as well because I'm sure that would have brought up a lot of stuff for you as well of oh mm. shit like <laughs> can I yeah. do this <laughs> you know what I mean that would have yeah. just been was terrifying and um even though there's that playful side to you which I see now that you'd be like no we'll be fine we'll all be good I'm sure there was also that yeah. inner battle of like oh my god what if something gets triggered and how am I going to be as a father but I also know yeah. that it would have made it, it would make you now 100% the father that you didn't have hmm. well it is I remember like the 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 only real life goal 
and when I say a life goal I mean that's something that doesn't include anything physical yeah like a, an object or something like that is like yeah. um the only real life goal I had that was like that when I was a kid I think it was about 11 12 years old was just I just knew that I wanted to be a dad because I wanted from from that point I was like I want to be able to give and to to be what I never had yeah and that was it I didn't know when that was going to be I didn't know how it was going to be I didn't know you know when that was going to manifest or or whatever but that's all I knew that I wanted to be and then when that day finally came I'm like oh fuck we've come (laughs) to the end of this journey now oh shit now I've got to learn how to be a dad (laughs) did I say I wanted this um um... (laughs) shit Oh, there's consequences to that thing that I did. Oh, fuck yeah, me, exactly. that sucks. <laughs> and it's like, oh, crap. Oh, what have I done? <laughs> um, no. <laughs> I've, I've, I've wished this for like nearly 25 years. What's going on? What's happening? I got what I wanted. Fuck this. I'm out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, look. Like to... I think life life is is funny sometimes. I think if you if you work with life and you you know you do take this time to really understand who you are as a person. Mm-hmm. And I think people think it's a selfish thing when you when you you go on that sort of journey for yourself and you know the the way I explain it is yeah it's, it is fucking selfish. But it's not the sort of selfish where it's like, you know, I'm going to do this for me and then I'm going to keep everything. It's right. the sort of selfish is like, you know, I'm going to do this for me so I can be a better person. So I can give whatever I need to give to the world or to the people around me or to the things I love. I can give my whole love, my heart, my attention to it and be fucking awesome at it. Yeah. And I I think when I when I got to that stage of around like 27, 28 years old, I was still traveling on the cruise ships and things like that and, and doing stuff. But I was already on this path of, of healing. It was just very, very basic at that point. It was just going to the gym and making sure I looked after my physical self and I had something to, that made me feel good. Um, but then it was like, well, if I want to be a dad, I can't be a dad on a cruise ship. I mean, well, I can, you know, because I don't know if anybody's heard about the journeys and stories on cruise ships, but things are quite frivolous um, and very carefree. I'm sure they are. <laughs> yes. I'm sure there's so, many fathers there's... and many different children and just what that's what that scared mean? the shit that scared the absolute shit out of me I had like oh, no. I was, on my last contract there was um a Romanian girl that I was dating in inverted commas yeah. and um like we like I, I was a fucking asshole to women back then I mean just like I was I would get to a point like in in a relationship where I'd be like I will give everything I can to this relationship mm-hmm. until a point. Mm-hmm. And that point was when I heard a word. All it took was one word. I love that word you. Was am- no, it wasn't even that. <laughs> it was the word was the word was amazing. Oh. And it, it sound sounds really big headed to say, but it's like it got yeah. to that point. Every single every single time I met a new girl, I would give, 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 give. And they'd be like, Oh my God, Joey, you're amazing. And I'd be just be like, right, that's it. <laughs> I can't do anything more than that. That's my fucking, wow. that's my glass ceiling right there. And I would just sabotage the fuck out of it. Dude. And uh, I did this, I did this to this girl, not as bad because I was on, I was still sort of on the road to recovery yeah. um, at that point. So I was, I was starting to become aware of myself, but it was a toxic relationship anyway. But anyway, <laughs> seven or eight months later, no, was, was it, I think it was about 10 months later. Was it like that? The time is really important because the maths don't work, basically. Oh. But anyway, I'm flicking through Facebook and there she is with a kid, and I'm just like, oh, what the fuck? What? She got a kid in her arms, and I'm like scrambling, trying to do the maths. I was like, when did I last do this? I was like, oh my God, is it, is it mine? Is it mine? I'm like looking at the kid to try and find to see if there's a resemblance. I'm like, it doesn't look like me. And it's like, oh no, that looks like me. And I was like, oh no. And then, like, I actually figured out and did the maths and like it's not my kid which is like I didn't ever want to be that guy if you know what I mean like that's not yes. how I meant to be, become a father yeah um, but yeah so when I actually became a father it was I was ready for it because yeah. 
life gave it to me when I was like, no, you, you need to go and do the work, dickhead. You know, you need yeah. to go and you need to go and heal yourself so that you're not passing on all this this toxic stuff that you've got within within you. Yeah. Like it, because it it was more about a belief about myself, like about who yeah. I was as a person that was that was causing all this toxicity. It wasn't real, like. I didn't want to hurt people. I didn't want to cause any pain or anything like that. It was just my own toxic individual belief about myself mm. that caused pain and trauma on the outside. And it continued to until I, until I finally got it sorted out, which was when I first met my really good friend, um, George, who's the, the founder of um, the EP7 program that I now coach. Mm. And um, once I met him and started to go through all this this, this journey, it was that was it I was just like my god I finally found a way to try and explain myself and to mm. try and understand who I am and it was a like there was tears there was laughter there was fucking heartbreak there was stress there was every emotion under the sun yeah but it was probably one of the biggest blessings that I've ever had to to be able to go through that yeah. and to to really understand like why all these things are happening yeah and where where all these ideas i had about myself were coming from it's massive and it's such a privilege to be able to like help people through that now right and because you you, you've really gone through all of it like there's still obviously the rest of your life to go through and all of the things that you'll go through with the people that you meet your family and all of that but to to get to the point where you go, I know enough now to help people to get from what they might be going through to get them to where they need to be, like to where you are. And mm -hmm. you'll still continue to, to evolve from here. Like you, you're already on this awesome healing journey. There's still so much mm -hmm. more to go and you've got all of the right people around by the sounds of it anyway. Um, I'm curious is like when you forgave your father around eight months ago, you were saying um, whether that was also a time where you felt I guess like self-love because to be able to, you know, to really heal, you have to truly be able to love yourself and be at peace with that. And like you were saying, so many people could say it's selfish or self-centered, but it's like actually you need to contain the energy within because when if we're living where our true purpose, anybody in this world, whatever that is, you are contributing to the rest of the world by doing that because you're, living in a state of abundance you're living in a state of clarity and freedom and that automatically allows you to just be more loving and like unconditionally loving not just like you were saying with that first relationship of just almost hiding things or trying to give all of this love of what you see love to be like an act versus a a state of being if that makes sense yeah yeah look again this is this is something i'm very very new to and I, I have to thank my energy lady that I have here in Perth. She's a fucking, we call her Bev the witch. I was going to say the witch. Group. Yeah. There's a whole group of, um, of men that mm -hmm. um, we're, we're all pretty close friends and we all go and see her. Yeah. Um, I was, I would have been dead against this sort of stuff years and years ago. I would have been, this is just fucking bullshit. <laughs> Like what? What's this? What's a witch gonna do for me? And she, she's not a witch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, don't like, I don't like to use that word, but I it's like it. that's that's just what that's just what we call her. But she's an amazing woman, and yeah. she's the she started to plug me into this sort of um, seven year um, sort of idea because yeah. she was saying like when I came to her, she said ah she she got me on a table and started doing all this stuff with her hands, and I'm like I have no idea what you are doing, but seems to be working it feels feeling <laughs> I feel better every time I leave here so I'm just gonna yeah. let you keep doing what you're doing and um she starts she talks to me and starts to you know give me a little insights into like why she's doing what she's doing and what's happening and she she started to talk to me about this seven year thing and it's like the reason you've come to me now is because you've got this seven year thing that's going to be coming up and you have this opportunity to really change but if you don't change, you got to wait another seven years for this opportunity again. So it's like, it's not like one day, it's just like the veil falls and it's like, you know, here's your brand new house. Kind yes. of thing. It, it's just like, it's a, it's a gradual thing that just starts to come, but it's more, if you want it to come, all you need to be do is to, to sort of accept it. 
and what will happen is what will come so i'm like okay this 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 seems pretty cool i, I like this idea Let, let's go with this i like superheroes i can become a superhero Excellent. <laughs> so um she said look it's around like she said around like december time like this is when this like this gateway or this window will start to open up for you so i'm like okay so december's come in and i'm like well, looking at my watch and i'm like when's this fucking change gonna happen you know, this, thing's gonna, dude, this thing's gonna happen and then all of a sudden like you wouldn't believe the complete opposite of what i thought was going to happen started to happen mm. and it's just like my life started falling to absolute shit and i'm still like i thought this was supposed to be a good thing but like my client started falling away with my job <gasps> excuse me my yeah, my client started falling away with work you know i'd already been fucked over by covid um and lost my lost my job and my one of my main sources of income through there and then all this other stuff just started happening like it's all like it was not super negative but it was yeah. just like a, a sort of a roller coaster of like negativity and i'm just like what the fuck is going on i thought things were supposed to be changing this is supposed to be like a good thing and then but it, it was you know looking back at it now and this is what this mushroom thing was has really helped me with it's like mm -hmm. looking back at it now it's like you look at when a, a baby is first born and the things that like they struggle with the simplest of simple things that to an adult seems so simple like they struggle to move they struggle to talk they struggle to walk they struggle to you know basic functions of just trying to hold stuff and it's like the, they have to go through this very challenging time to be able to get through and to, to keep building themselves. And it's like, when I look back at it now, it's like, holy shit, that's what this is. This like this, this yeah. pain and trouble and struggle that I'm going through right now is it's not because this is the way life's meant to be. It's that it's like, I'm back to being that, that baby in this new phase of my life is I'm, I've got to struggle to overcome these things. And yeah. I have like a, a board just on my wall there. And every year I, I give myself a new target. And um, I think I've got there in 2019 was all about self-discipline and 2020 was self-growth. And then this year, 2021 was about self-belief and self-worth. Yes. Um, and it's like, well, this is my baby phase of understanding what self-worth and self-belief was. Mm. so I've gone in and you know I started to pay a lot of attention to my intuition and like listening to my intuition and just doing and I'm, I'm writing from that space um when I feel that like engaged to do so yeah. and I just started to get real emotional one night and I just started writing and all this stuff came out about my dad and like I'm just like oh my god yeah I got it in my, my diary somewhere but um it's like I started reading it back to myself and I'm like holy shit it's just it's all about compassion like this is where the base this is where the absolute base comes from it's like there's nothing below compassion like if you can hold compassion for everything in this world oh. you've cracked literally the, the the secret to being on the bridge to build a happy and joyful life for yourself because it's when you think about it if you have no compassion for something there's there has to be an opposite to that and it's like yeah. resentment or anger or stress or you push it away as if it's something you don't want to see yeah so that's i realized fuck that's what i was doing with my dad for so long i had no compassion for him i had hatred yeah i had disgust i had you know a real horrible feeling about him for my pretty much my whole life yeah and then i was like well if I can have compassion for my dad and who he was and try and find a way to be compassionate. And that's yeah. where I got the thing of like, well, he gave me life. Yeah. If that, if that is his only mission as part of my life, then that's it. And that then gave me the idea as well. Fuck. Look at what an asshole I've been for the past 30 odd years. And you know, the, the people I've hurt along the way, the, the, the problems I've caused. And it's like, well, I want, I want to feel good again. And I, I want to have compassion for myself because I don't feel like I, I should punish myself for all the things that I've done. Well, there's a good to fair chance, not saying that it's 100%, but there's a good to fair chance that he probably had some shit that he was dealing with. And that's where I came to the idea that it's like, he probably couldn't handle being a father. Yeah. It's not that he didn't want me. He didn't want me as a human being. It's not the, the representation of who I am. It's a representation of what he feels within himself about who he can be. 
and yeah. he probably couldn't be a father. And I sat back and I thought, wow, I bawled my eyes out and I'm trying yeah. very hard not to bore my eyes out now as well. Yeah, I'm feeling you, um, man. I'm just like, it's yeah. so like deep too because when I love that you even got to the root of it being compassion because I just feel that immediately that that's the gooey center part of what unconditional love is you can't have that without having compassion and and by having compassion means you've gone through a level of shit yourself because when people don't understand something they usually don't ha have compassion and mm. you know it's it's having to go through enough life experiences and and not the same ones but enough to get the same lesson and go like oh fuck like like you said, oh, I've also been an asshole, but people have loved you, you know, like, and it's like, oh, I've been mean, but, or I've run away from things, but people have still loved you. And like mm -hmm. that, that need for, for people to have that love and compassion in their life, even if they've done something that you deem as um, a poor choice. And what I, it's funny, because like what I wrote in my journal last night, I have a book of a 365 day journal that I just write something once a day that I don't know what I want to do with it but it's just whatever comes through in that moment when I sit down and it was um it was like on the oh, I want to make sure I say it right it's not even that profound but it's get, like, get the get the journal out. that's important journal. it's important right, to get exactly it out, my yeah. laptop's sitting on it um oh it says <laughs> On the other side of whatever you're experiencing, a new perspective awaits. And mm. I just loved it because it's like, it's so true. It's like all of those little um, Chinese proverbs and all of that, like what they say is also true. What they're experiencing is also true. So it kind of gets you out of that asshole vibe of like, I'm right. Uh, it's my way or the highway. It's like, no, but like, what I see right now is true, and but also your version of the story is going to be true to you. So, um, yeah, it's a it's such a beautiful place to get to with with where you've been at in life. I'm sure it's still not like you said; it's not always easy to talk about or to feel certain things come up. But it's so mm. important for you to do that. And yeah, I'm proud of you and appreciate you being able to be open and honest with this. Like on air and just with someone you barely know even though i feel like i've known you forever yeah um, <laughs> well look at, at the end of the day this is like, again it's, it's part of my journey is like yeah. if you can be honest with yourself about things and you you can you know you you move past that fear of you know judgment of from from mm -hmm. other people because you realize that you know we, we all think that we're going to be judged at some stage because yeah. it's when, whenever you say something and it has like a scary effect because it has an emotional hold on you you always think it's like well I feel this emotion so there's the way I'm thinking and the way I'm relating to that emotion there's a 99 percent chance that the other person that I'm going to say this to is going to judge me because they'll see that emotion whereas mm -hmm. that's never the case yeah so it's, it's always the opposite to that you know so it's like once I got comfortable with my own story it's just like well this is where the compassion comes in again. It's like, yeah. if this person that I'm going to say this thing is going to judge me, fuck them. I don't want right. them as part of my life. They can, you know, what, what, why would I ever want to spend my time and energy with this person that's going to judge me? And for me, that's like, that's fucking awesome. Because yeah. that means that, you know, I'm not going to shut the door on that person, but that means it's like, well, I don't not, I do not want to spend or waste my time and energy with you if you're going to think about me that way. I want to spend right. it with someone I can have a true connection with. So yeah. it's like, well, that's awesome because that's like your bullshit filter has just been, you know, upgraded. Totally. It's like that thing as well. Like what others think of you is none of uh, what <clears throat> others think of me is none of my business. Like hmm. tell me, but it's how you choose to react from it. Like, tell me if you wish. And yeah, if you, you know, someone's like, oh, I like you or I don't like you. It's like, cool, same response. Like, do you know what I mean? It's like, great, buddy. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> well, me. No worries. I'll just be here. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's so, it's so interesting because I know you'd see people in that same light. It's like, how they respond to things it's it just reflects more of who they are as a person it's like 
thank you for showing me your true colors or thank you thank you for showing me your honesty in this moment when maybe I haven't been completely honest at other times and while the blunt reality might hurt or the naked reality like I want to get into your podcast um (laughs) truth doesn't waste time so it's like saying things outright is just such a such a gift and even though there's probably better ways that people could say things it's like regardless just get it out otherwise your body just holds on to so much and like you you were saying you know with all the healing that you've gone through it's like your your physical body has to release that before even other parts can start to process what's going on so yeah it's a yeah, life right. of trip right <laughs> What I, what I want to do. What are you going to do? You're looking like you're inspired. Oh, you got a guitar in the background there, dude. Yes. Oh, I've got guitars. I've got bongos. I've got all sorts of yes. stuff. Yes. Okay. I'm we actually, actually need to hang out, dude. I'm so keen. <laughs> so do you write? I've, yeah. I, I've never shared this on um, a podcast before. So I think this yes. is a good, good time to share this. Um, because this is... This is this is where I came up with the the whole compassion thing. Yes, go um, on. it's a little long, so bear with me. Um, it won't oh. take that long, but um, so I again, like I, I was doing some tuning in. I just had a, a like a really hot salt bath, so I was like feeling super relaxed, and then I just got this this like this overwhelming bear of emotion came up, and I'm just like, what the fuck? So I'm like, okay, pen and paper time, let's do this, and I just started writing, and this is what came out. What if I've cracked the code? What if I've figured it out? What to do with it? Who to tell? What if, the, what if everything we need is us? What if we are right that we are born with everything we need? What if we are eternal? What if the key to happiness is the individual? We are all born with a mind and intelligence. What if its sole purpose was designed to help us survive? It is so powerful that it can create a construct of everything that we need in order to live out our experiences. If we are hurt, learn to defend against that hurt and create an identity or a fortress in order to keep us safe. The rest of us is designed to help support that brain to help it see and release that defense once we see that the pain is no longer there. But what if we lost the ability to be able to communicate with that brain as we become so wrapped up in a reality that is anything but real? We abandon the real mission, the real mission, we are the way we are. Like everything, we are made up of some sort of a fuel and energy. It moves, it heats, it flows, it reacts, but it's the same in every conscious being, small, large, or in between. What if the key to simply just, what if the key is to simply just pay attention to the basics of what we are and start there, then fill ourselves full of self, self-love, self-worth, self-belief, self-gratitude, self-compassion. With these selves and the simple structure of who we are, we only need to look here to be able to start the healing process. Because if you are able to see the self for what it is, you will see the self in everyone because everyone is made up of the same thing as you. Therefore, you are self, they are self, and together you are one in the same. This way, you, me, and anyone will be able to see the love, gratitude, belief, worthiness, and compassion in everyone. Because if you are self and hold these, then they are self and hold these too. All they are missing is a way to communicate to our safety mechanism that is our brain. Fear, pain, emotion, anxiety, just some of the warning signs that communication is there. We just have to turn on the switch and take it back to self. So what do we do? How do we train that switch? There is no direct answer. It could be a mirror, a death, a trauma that shakes these alarm triggers so strong that it is hard to ignore and to see that our our construct of our defensive reality is not real. Then a leap of faith is needed, a leap that may seem too big when viewed by the brain. However, the leap is only small and you can see it, feel it, touch it, smell it, hear it and sense it every day. It's the most real part of reality. It is you. The first self is self-trust. Once we start on this path, only then can we see that the mind can create. It can create any reality. Add self-love and you will feel and create love. 
add self-belief and you will start to believe in the new reality being created add self-worth and you will start to realize the true value of this creation add in self-gratitude and you will start to appreciate this beautiful creation from your body and finally add in self-compassion in that we will need to adjust along the way and probably have to repeat this process several times like all good artists do but more importantly we will see that the same blueprint exists in everyone and we will feel what they feel and they will feel what you feel then we will understand without words we will slow down and find peace then we will have our common unity and that's that dude Sounds like a little meditation <laughs> so good that came, a, that came from a hot bath <laughs> yes how good is that because that like just dropping in and closing my eyes for that felt like your voice as well is amazing it's like <laughs> told you about radio presenter right it is <laughs> <laughs> um but it felt it feels like what i've written from some psychedelic trips that i've gone on of like just complete clarity and i guess when you think of like even salts and salt bath it's like clearing everything out and just being in that state of everything it, it almost sounded like the same thing reworded in circles but just completing itself i, I can't even explain it it's like yeah, yeah. That, that that has not been edited in any single way shape or form that was just i just started writing and i finished writing and that was it i didn't didn't do a second version or a third version that was just a, a that was just coming out of my i, I wasn't even it, it was a, it's strange to try and explain it because yeah. i wasn't thinking it was just yeah because it, it almost like, seems structured in itself writing. it's got like self-trust mm -hmm. self-worth self um gratitude and self-compassion like there was a complete structure there but obviously coming from your heart and not of like what you just knew not your head and that's just like what the fuck <laughs> i'm tripping very, up amazing very fucking cool but it's so cool well, this more this is what i want more salt this is what i wanted to share yeah more salt bast <laughs> definitely more mushroom journeys too that was awesome um but this is what I wanted to share around um, suicide. This yeah. is, I've never shared this before because there's a, a sense of judgment that I have in myself because it's really controversial. Mm. Um, and it probably would upset a lot of people. Yeah. Um, but this is what I realized about what suicide really is from my own personal experience is that we should embrace suicide for, uh, as, a, as an actual thing and really start to look into it and not run from the the aspect of what suicide is mm -hmm. and start to really delve into the the emotional understanding of what it is because what i realized for myself is that through embracing this 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 thing that i tried to do like to try and end my own life is that because i didn't i've had the opportunity to dig into it and because i've dug into it it's it, 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 from that speech and that, that thing that I wrote down and from like um, a few other things that I've done is that when we get to that point in our lives where we're depressed and we want to end our own life, it's not that we want to literally end life altogether for ourselves in this body that we're in. Mm -hmm. It's that we finally come to a point, like a, a headway where we, we can't move forward anymore because we want to get rid of a version of ourselves that is no longer supporting where we're going in the future. Whether that is because you're, you know, from most what you hear from people that want to take their own lives, the, the sick of the way things are, the sick of life, they, they, they want to move forward, but they can't because they they just feel like there's something holding them back. And that thing is their, their own belief of who they are because, and it's stopping them from moving forward. Now, if we sat with this thought and we sat with this feeling, we would realize that it's we don't want to physically die. We just want yeah. this this version of ourselves, this this one that's got all these horrible ideas of who we are that we're worthless, that we're 
you know, not not meant to be part of this world, that we're a horrible person or that we've fucked life up for so many different people or whatever. Yeah, I hold my hand up. I, I was that person. I made mistakes. Yeah. But I don't want to die. I just want to lose that person of me so I can be a better person, so I can be more beautiful and give back to the world. That's what suicide should be about. That's the, the realization that the, the best thing that I can say is that has come from all of this is like, we should embrace this point in our lives. There should be a, a, a place or, or something that we can do as human beings, a place where we can go to, to, to realize that when we want to take our lives, not to be put on some fucking drug to, to mm -hmm. minimize the feeling, we need to feel this feeling and really understand what it is. Yeah. because it that's exactly what it is we just don't want this version of ourselves to carry on supporting us supporting us because they don't have the education or the tools to to be able to help us move forward in life and unless we that. move past that point i just yeah. love unless we that move past that point yeah sorry go, go oh, on. no i'm just i'm having so many light bulb moments listening to you because i practice and live yoga and that's that whole mini death side or what they call a shavasana it's like corpse pose or when we talk about you know letting a part of our ego die or whatever not even not even just in that but when you go through a healing process like there's a part of your old personality that had to be um shed like that part has died and moved on whereas the language and the meaning that we attach to suicide has a negative connotation like you were saying versus a just absolutely love that you like acknowledge that it's not that they really want to take their life but it's like they just don't feel like they can get to that next stage in their physical form and it's like while for some that is true but for others like you, 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 you're still here today, which I'm really happy for that and grateful that, you know, you made that choice and are able to share your message in a more beautiful way and to help others. But um, it's such a, like, we go through so many transitions in life where a part of us is dying, but nobody likes mm. to talk about death. No one likes to talk about, you know, that scary word, whereas it's like, we're on a journey right from the beginning of our birth of like how gracefully we can transition to death. That's, that's how I see it anyway. Um, and yeah, suicide, I just feel like it's definitely the language and the meaning that we've all attached to that versus like you were saying, just delving deeper into it and like, well, what are you feeling like? Where are you feeling like you can't be right now? Why are you feeling like your body isn't where you want to be um and then figuring out the best modality to get you to that next spot for some that might be um successfully taking their life for others it can be programs like um ep7 which you're a part of or any other program that works for people but i'd love to hear more about what ep7 actually goes through like what what the stages are for that and what you take people through yeah, sure. Um, so when I did EP7, um, it's, it's changed a lot. It's evolved into something a lot more technologically simple, which is um, it's better. It was when I went through it, it was a lot of face-to-face um, -face coaching and a lot of workbooks and things like that, but it's transformed into videos to make it simpler and more manageable for people to, to um, take in the information. Um, I've actually started recently, I'm releasing a program um, in a couple of months that is sort of like a bridging group course to EP7, because um, what I've realized is it's it's very full on. Like right. when, when, you go, when you go through the course, we, you know, there's the seven steps and the first step is in itself is a journey. Like each step's a journey. And I mean, it's we, we break down and, and look where all your belief systems have come from, where they originate. So it's a lot of digging into the past and understanding like who you are, where you've come from, like what, what you've done. And that can be quite overwhelming for people. Yeah. So with one of my, um, one of my friends and, and George as well, we've come up with this course, which is, which is called, we've called it, it's your time. 
Um, and it's again, it's just a seven step course, but it, it's, it's very, very simple. Um, we're just looking at dealing with the logical mind. So one of the biggest things that we all suffer from in this, um, especially in the Western world is time management. We never have the time to do the things that we want to do. So let's start there. Then look at building your health. Then look at, you know, delving into your emotional side of things and then go through and have a very, very brief, like sort of gentle look at how you can be more creative, how you can start to look at, you know, developing your purpose a little bit more more and then start to go into the performance of things mm -hmm. then from there now you now you're a bit more open you understand yourself a bit more excuse me um you've got this opportunity now it's like okay let's go deeper if you want to and let's go through the journey of ep7 because now you're more open to the the idea of change and how it can actually help you the experience will be so much more beneficial because there'll be less fight Right. there'll be less you'll you'll be wanting to take on the information because there's a lot of science in there there's a lot of what people refer to as woo woo sort of stuff in there um but it, it's it's very 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 helpful and you know i took it on at a time where i needed it whereas for most people you you get offered this opportunity and you you're like oh, I, i'm not i don't need something like that i need something but not something like that because that's too much right. So it's, it's, look, it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful course. Um, you know, it, it gives you a way to tap into your emotions and to really understand like how you are as a person in certain situations. So like when you're at your, your best self, which we never do, we never celebrate our, our best versions of ourself. We always punish our worst self, but we, as human beings, we just think, okay, achievement, good. Now on to the next thing. Right. whereas when we fuck up we're like i'm an arsehole i'm an arsehole three years later still an arsehole because you punish yourself right. whereas you're not celebrating the same thing in the same time frame so we look at understanding who you are in your best self and then understanding who you are in your worst self on an emotional level and how that makes you act as a person mm -hmm. then in steps three and four it's all about building um your tuning into your imagination and your intuition to help you engage your creative state like this, this artistic nature of who you can be yeah. like that's the person who wrote that thing that i read out it's yeah. the person who creates these courses it's the person who does my artwork it's the person who plays my guitar yeah is that's we we want to engage that creative nature because the more you can engage engage it in different areas the more beautiful you will start to experience in life because mm -hmm. you'll become a better problem solver in everything you'll be you'll find new ways to do things new ways to find enjoyment out of life and that's really important then we go on to developing all about your purpose and starting to really set you up with who do you really want to be we know so much about you now mm. but we've got a base set of principles we've got a base set of values let's build something that you really want to be rather than setting these you know i know let's set a a five-year goal, a 10-year goal, and all this shit about money and stuff like that is great to have. I'm not going to bag it or anything like that because it's, it's important. But we need to do it from a purposeful place. Yeah. You know, why are we, why do we want all these things? You know, is yeah. being a billionaire really what you want to be? Because it comes with a lot of fucking problems, you know, <laughs> and it's a lot of hard work to get there. Like, yeah. it seems attractive, but is that really what you want? Let's figure that out first and then try and figure that figure out you know what what the these tech five three one year goals and all that sort of stuff are yeah. and then finally it's about then pulling you out of this being absorbed in yourself and putting you back into your environment and starting to address now we've got this new purposeful version of you starting to address who you need to address and what you need to address like are you in the right job how is your job serving you? Like, uh, how are you approaching your work? You know, how are you approaching the people at work? How do you view what it is you do and your, your commitment to this job? Is this, do you want your job to be your, your whole purpose in life? Or is your job just serving a purpose as bringing an income for the family? You've got to yeah. figure that shit out. Yeah. And that, that's when you start to figure out, you know, we, we spend so much time looking at job satisfaction. It's like, well, you can be in any job as long as you know the purpose that it's serving. Correct. 
So it's it's important to understand that, but it's also under, important to address the people yeah. because you may be surrounded by people that don't support this new version of you. Mm. And it's important for you to know that you have to be surrounded by the people that are going to embrace you. Yeah. And if they, they're not going to embrace you, then you have to address it. You don't have to tell them to piss off, but you have to say, look, man, like I can't, you know, keep going on these benders every weekend with you because I need to follow this path, this purpose in my life now because it's important to me. Yeah, yeah you know, we, we can go and do it maybe every now and again, maybe once a year or something like that as like a reunion kind of thing. But it's like, I can't keep doing it every weekend. Yeah. But that's you taking ownership of your life and saying that, you know, this is what I need to do for me to be this more purposeful version of me. And then it's just about going out in the world and keep practicing it. So setting yourself up with coffee dates with, you know, doing something like we're doing now, for example, yeah. and saying, so, you know, you look going, Lauren, look, I just want to open up to you and say, look, this is who I am. This is the journey I've gone on. And this is what I really want to do with my life now. And yeah. I just wanted to talk to you about that. And then yeah. if you go to me, Joey, I think you're fucking stupid. <laughs> what are you doing? This sounds like a whole load of bullshit. I'll be gone. Well, I'm sorry you feel that way, Lauren, but you know, this is the path that I'm on. Yeah. But then, you know, you've, you're not, you're not shutting the door on that person. You're just going, look, this is who I'm going to be. You know, I'm always going to be around. If you change your mind and you want to open up to it, then I'm always going to be here for you. Yeah. But I, if, if this is the sort of interaction we're going to have because of it, then I'm sorry, I just don't want to hang out with you anymore. Because yeah. it's, it's, it's not going it's not going to serve who I want to be in this life. And it's important. And that way you also make so much more space for what you're actually trying to invite in, whether it's compassion, you know, even though we barely know each other from a bar of soap, it's like you are someone that I would catch up with coffee because I can see your intent behind what you're doing. I can feel your reasons for why and it's not just oh, just catching up just to catch up it's like no my why behind this is to spread this message of what my purpose is to share this knowledge and um and to be able to for it to you know even if it's reaching only me and no one listens to this or watches this it's like hmm. that I can feel is already enough for you like it's enough for me hmm. and I'm just like that's just such it's such a beautiful feeling to have when you connect with someone in that way of like wow they're just so pure of intention and that's where I really don't think hate can get into you when you're loving so much it's just like someone can be so angry so mad it's like it's okay like it's all good no problem yes it can hurt all of this stuff like it can bring up things but when you can always come back and just go like I am self-compassion, I am self-gratitude, self-trust, self-worth. And you go over that in your head again and it's like, well, actually get out of your head and go back into your heart space and just know at the core of us, we're all that. And someone not experiencing that must be in a hurtful place. And, you know, I, I always think those people are the ones that I just want to send extra love to when I sit and get still of like the people that I don't know who are struggling. It's like, give them everything that you know the abundance that is here that they don't even know that they can access it's like it's within it's all around as well hmm. yeah you are 100 percent right and it's look this is what people used to do like thousands of years ago before tvs before cars before all this sort of shit people used to sit down and talk to each other because yeah. they have nothing else to do that's how people found enjoyment and love yeah. And it's like from, like you said, from conversations like this, you know, if nobody ever listens to it, you know, I, I'm the same with my podcast. It's like, if nobody ever <laughs> listens to it, I don't give a fine fuck. You know, <laughs> I've had an awesome conversation and I feel fucking awesome right now. Same. You know, and, and that's, yeah. that's it. That's it. You know, and, and that's what beautiful conversations are all about. It's about making you feel good. And yeah. it's like the more open I am, the more open you become and the more, we get shit figured out and it's like yeah. you know imagine if i came on here and you're like so joey how was your story and i'm just like yeah i've had a shit life <laughs> you know it's like oh, but, fucking hell what's this bloke awesome you know it's you know you're gonna think like oh my god what the fuck have i done and <laughs> i'm, I'm gonna be there like well that's a shit conversation i thought this was gonna be fun 
And then we're both going to walk away <laughs> feeling like crap, you know? I just need to say, have you watched the Big Les show? Because that is just, no, oh my God, you need to get onto it immediately. It's, I can't even explain. It's this, you would love it. You have to watch it from season one. It's like four seasons. It's ridiculously intelligent humour and just the way that you speak. We need to have a conversation okay. after you've watched it, okay? Um, okay. okay. <laughs> send, send, me, send me some way to try and find it. I want to watch it. I will. It's oh, fucking awesome. brilliant. But I just, yeah, uh, my mind has just gone into a whole other place. <laughs> it's hilarious. <laughs> like the way you were talking just then reminded me of it, of like I'd probably just take the piss out of it or be like, okay, no worries, and like try and find some way in. But then, um, mm. yeah, it's funny, isn't it, how some people are just so determined to not be loved or to be so closed. And um, and I feel like they're the teachers in life of like, how can I show up even more? How can I be more loving without being like overbearing and stuff? But it's like, how can you be that reflection to somebody to, you know, to lead by example, to show them what being open and honest looks like to show them what loving looks like to show them what kindness is or um that they might not have ever experienced like we we know shit about people like we make judgments of them and we like we literally for most people in our life that we meet we we barely know where they've been unless they choose to decide to you know tell us everything or we've been fortunate enough to go through years and years of life with them um mm. but we, we're just so quick to judge in a moment and that's why I love working at random jobs that I'm at now like I'm working in cafes but it's I love it because it's dealing with people and you get that chance to just get a glimpse into their life and go like wow like what are you doing today where are you at and you see some people coming in regularly and it's like oh you've got like humans have all these funny little patterns that they do and and it's just the whole people reading thing in general but um back to the message of just showing up to a place of being able to to reflect to them a quality that you would think that someone else would want to have in themselves of like joyfulness or kindness and it's a little bit hard to to get angry at someone who's smiling at you I think anyway I know, yeah. um, <laughs> it's I mean, I I found this on my journey on working on cruise ships. It's like if you want to learn something about yourself, and you want to evolve, and you want to be, you know, a more open and vibrant human being, get around fucking people. Right. Like, and not in a way is like, so you know, you're just standing around, but have chats to them, talk to them, find you know, find a way. Like, working in a space where there's lots and lots of people around is a great way to find out stuff about yourself and to yeah. to really develop who you are and. To, to understand more about you because it's like I'm not talking about like you know dealing with people's problems but yeah you know in in this in the service industry like I, I was a casino manager for seven years on the cruise yeah. ships so I, I was talking to people all the time and you're not dealing with the problems all the time you're just having like conversations and listening and you know just some people yeah you, you, you might meet some really off-colored people sometimes which you, I definitely did yeah um I never forget there was this, this one conversation. I was having a great chat. Like it was, it was going down one of those rabbit hole kind of things. Yeah. And I'll never forget it. And we were just talking away and chitting and chatting and this, this lovely little couple. And it got onto this. We started going on to, I don't know what we were talking about, but I just, I said the words. It's like, I'm not, I, I'm not a racist person, but you know, I just tried to explain like black communities through like trying my best not to be racist. And like, yeah. they just went, oh, we're 100% racist. And I'm just like, say what now? It's like, <laughs> oh, we hate black people. And I'm just like, are you fucking kidding me? And I'm like, what? I'm sorry, I can't talk to you anymore. That That's horrible. Like, I think just huh? the, the conversation was just like, bomb. Like, you can meet some really off-colored people. <laughs> like, but... So I know. I just... It was the most random experience I've ever had. I was just like, how can I end this conversation quickly? Because this just got fucked up. Wow. And you, you, will, meet, you will meet people like that. You, you can't Correct. help, you know, 
how other people are, but it's just like, wow, you know, like. Again, and that's just that confrontation. It's like something that you're needing to learn in that moment of like, wow, that that is not on my frequency. Like, thank you. Mm. I will, don't know really what to do with it right now, but I know that we will not be chatting after this or, or like even I'm just curious. I get curious with that stuff though, like asking the question of like, why? Mm. Oh, I was, I think because I was so young at the time when it happened, right. I was just like, I got a lot of black friends and I, I yeah. love all people. Yeah. And it's like, I've got no fucking interest in talking to you people anymore. Like, so whatever. Far. And like, you, you meet people like that. Like yeah. they've they're probably got the, their own problems that have been passed on for generations of you know like yeah. white supremacy and all this sort of shit. But you know the at the end of the day they're, they're like one in a billion those people. Whereas yeah. you know for the most part when you talk to people you will just you will have conversations about anything and everything and you'll cool, learn like it? yeah like the amount that we've we've talked today like we've never met each other before. This yeah. is the first time we're actually having a conversation yeah. and it's like i've learned so much today yeah and it, it's just from having a, a nice chat yeah and that, that's that's the beauty of what conversation is like the more you can involve yourself around that like working at a coffee shop is a freaking great place Dude, to, to be best. able to do that like used to be a paramedic quit that became a yoga teacher massage therapist left tasmania to be closer to my family here met my soulmate yeah working at cafes, living fucking best life ever. Like just because it's, uh, this is where I started the podcast as well, because it's like you said, it's meeting people like yourself and looking back through life and all the jobs you would have done in life, all the jobs I would have done in life. You strike me as like a Gemini kind of vibe. Um, But it's, it is, it's surrounding myself with people. And at some point that was probably more, so to distract myself from having to look within but now it's coming from a I'm so full within that I want to just give and I just want to serve wherever that is or just understand somebody's story and go like hey like tell me about you you're interesting to me because I don't know who you are you might think you're someone who's so boring um but we we often forget like all of the the little pockets of interesting conversations or things we've done along the way and if someone can remind you to bring out that story it's like oh that's right I do have that creativity or that's right I do love things (laughs) like um yeah yeah, it's cool yeah it's a a beautiful power of conversation yeah you can make you realize a lot about yourself that you knew but were blissfully unaware of correct as for your podcast my friend yeah. i only just learned yeah. that he had a podcast mind blown it's called naked hence, reality hence microphone. <laughs> <laughs> i know you just well, look legit like my uh, setup not so not, much very wing it I'm situation not, <laughs> it's like when people don't realize i've got a podcast it's like why has this bloke got a microphone it's like <laughs> Is he one of those guys that, you know, it's like turns up to the basketball court with the goggles and the fucking knee pads, uh, and all, the, <laughs> all the gear, but no idea kind of thing. <laughs> yes, he's got the head gear. Right. Like, man, you're on the, the you're thing. on the side. Got the you know, band, got, got the goggles, got the high top socks, got the fucking yeah. sneakers, got everything ready to go. And yeah, no, like, I actually have my own pocket. <laughs> it's the technician versus the practitioner. Um, yeah. Which is me. I'm just like, oh yeah, microphone, mine's hiding. Um, no, don't have one. Um, I love I want to hear though more about it because it sounds like it's something yeah. from what you were saying is more with uh real and honest conversations with men. Um well it's not with men, like I've it's um equal um oh, cool. men and women. Like it does like I, I don't try and stop like the 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 whole idea, it's I'll start from the beginning. Like my, my podcast was originally based around my story. Like my yeah. very first episode is just me talking to myself um, about my, my horn experience. And it's cool. Like, because it, it gave me an idea of what I really wanted it to be. And um, when I first started, it was called the fuck suicide podcast. Nice. And 
in my fourth episode, I had um, one of the most mind blowing conversations I think I've ever had because it was with a woman that I'd known for about maybe five or six years. Yeah. And I had absolutely no fucking clue about any of what she was talking about. Mm-hmm. Like when she opened up and told me a story, I was just like, oh, I don't, I, I think like I've, I've re listened to the episode maybe once or twice now. Yeah. And I don't think I spoke until the very end oh until God. she'd finished talking. I remember I was like, like back, back then I didn't have like, I just had a really um, funny setup. Like I had a very small recorder and two tiny little mics and we were about, I'd just finished painting my daughter's room and then we'd stack the mics up on boxes. So we were like <laughs> trying our best to like record this podcast because there was no video or anything like no zoom. It was all face to face. Yeah. Um, and I was just like, I could not believe it. But it was exactly what I wanted to do, which was I wanted to have open conversations with people about their journeys through mental health. And I thought the best way to do that is over having coffees. Like the yes. best conversations are always when people are sat down face to face, having a cup of coffee, they're relaxed, they're, you know, they're open because of the caffeine, they're feeling good because of the caffeine. Mm-hmm coffee is you know a miracle drug when it comes to that sort of stuff and yeah. how many of these conversations do we have that we were like fuck I wish I could have recorded that that was awesome right. or you hear somebody having a conversation and you just like kind of just leaning in it's like I want to hear more about this this sounds fucking cool like what a what a cool right. little story this person's telling and it's like well what if we can just record that and you know it's about like dices with suicide or mental health and things like that yeah but from there um because her story was so powerful i was like i need to fucking share this with more more like i started reaching out re- reaching out to people and like please will you just share my podcast with your audience this is such a powerful story mm-hmm. i didn't want anything back i just wanted this this podcast yeah. to get out there more this 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 just this one story yeah and um everybody said no nah, not doing it not doing it and i'm just like why and it's like dude i, I cannot be aligned with something that's called fuck suicide and i'm just like mm. Mm. okay fair enough it makes a lot of sense because they're you know these people are like fucking very influential they wanted mm. to help they listened to the story yeah um and they wanted to help but they're like sorry i just cannot share it it's just it's just not in a line with what i'm what, what my business and my brand's about and i'm like look that's fair enough so it was like, what can I do then? So I, I then changed the name to something else that didn't mean anything about anything. It was just something that I created. Um, and then one day I was just like, I don't like this name. It's mm-hmm. stupid. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I just came up with like, what is this? Like, it's like, this is like naked reality. Like understanding people's mental health. It is like yeah. stripping people naked to, to to bear the reality of what mental health really is and their mm-hmm. own personal journeys. And since then it's been super super cool like i had heaps oh, more guests yeah. um i don't record that many episodes because of the length of them like I, yeah. I think i said this i think we were chatting about this before we jumped yeah. on the show like my longest episode is four and a half hours um with one of my one of my really really close friends um and again another dude that i would known for a long long time had no fucking clue what he'd been through until he opened up to me about it and mm. this is the basis of what I want it to be is like nobody shares anything like this unless you ask them yeah. but you never ask them because you have no reason yeah. to ask them you never sit down and go through hey mate tell me a little bit about your life and what you've been through that's fucked up yeah and nobody nobody says that it's just like you just start talking about random shit and you you may go down that path if you know the person's courageous enough but if you get an invitation to come on a podcast it's like please can you share something about your own journey through mental health yeah. and they'll be like oh fuck yeah i'd love to do that i'd love to talk about this right. sort of stuff. Yeah, come <clears> on <throat> and let's have a chat about it four and a half hours later we realized the whole day had gone by and um we're just like man, we should, we, we should probably wrap this up because I don't think anybody will listen to four and a half hours worth of podcast. Yeah. <laughs> People will. And it, isn't it yeah. so cool when you don't put a time frame on things as well of like, the whole thing with people getting vulnerable is them being able to trust you. And once they've done that, it's like hairdressers, people just tell them anything because you're dealing with just 
I don't know, people think they're going to be judged by something, but so often we're like, oh, we've done fucking worse than that. Like, is that all you're worried about? <laughs> like, bring it on. And it's not a story topping situation, but what I love that where we're both in alignment with what we do, and I love what you do, is that it's just letting people speak and just go like, mm. get perspective that your little world is also, you know, that could be something that you share with someone else or just by listening to somebody else's story, you go, oh, actually, like, my days are actually pretty cool. Or my life's fucking good. Um, mm. I'm grateful for this or whatever it is. And just bringing in those small moments of gratitude into every day is like, gosh, yeah, I'm sure your podcast has um, healed people and not in that traditional sense of I'm doing a healing on you, but just trauma release, like letting that story be shared. Fucking awesome. Yeah, it's it's mad. Like some of the some of the things that people have shared, like uh, you know, the, the lady that I was talking to you about, she was raped yeah. when she was like two, three years old, and she, then she went through a whole like a whole life was you know a, a full of abuse. Then I've had you know. Um, people that have realized that they've not been good people throughout their life because yeah. of their own trauma and they've shared that then you know of physical like um sexual abuse you know physical violence domestic abuse um yeah. I, I had a conversation the other day with um the guy that suffered from childhood cancer and his whole yeah. journey throughout life um it's so many amazing stories like yeah. it's it's so cool to be able to sit there and, and talk to talk to all these different people from different walks of life because it's yeah you just you just don't know any of this shit right and like there's i think out of all the episodes i've done i've recorded 28 i've released 21 i think there's only been about maybe five people that i didn't know before doing the, mm. the episodes and out of those those people that i knew didn't have a clue didn't have an idea of some of the stuff that I'd, i knew some of them had been through some shit but yeah. not the to the depths that they shared i'm just like you know my mouth was like Ugh! most of the yeah. time wide open yeah but yeah it's it's like it's, it's it started off as i don't know what it started off as really i don't even remember it was just like just a want to to get these conversations out there in the world and now it's just become a fucking delight to be able to and a privilege to be able to do it's so cool it's so and I, you know cool. i'm i'm sure this has happened to you too is like you you get to that stage where you get hung up it's like i want this to go somewhere i want to be fucking joe rogan of the, <laughs> the this sort of a world and you, you do get hooked up in it because it's like oh man like people are listening people are thinking it's like i can make this something but then like you get stuck on that attachment i think that's when it oh, shit i think that's when it holds you back and then it, it pulls you back down to right. you know like oh i really lost a sense of what this thing was all about yeah and then when you finally go you know reconnect to, to that that thing and it's like wow and you know I, I i'm guilty of looking at my stats on um on my my podcast host and mm -hmm. it's it's the coolest thing is is like there's like a little map of the world on there and it shows you where you've hit in the world and i think i'm up to about 32 countries now which is That's fucking awesome. mind blowing. yeah like i hit <laughs> africa and i'm just like who's listening to me in africa i want to know you like <laughs> let's get you on man like <laughs> yeah let's, let's who's who's listening to me in africa fucking cool and i was like i don't but, know anybody in, oh I actually, I actually do know people in africa but like not in the country i think it was like um Namibia, I think it was on Nairobi. It began with an it began with an N. Um, but yeah, I was like, I don't know anybody from there, so it's like that's so fucking cool. Sick. Because well, because I've traveled so much, I can kind of go. It's like, oh yeah, I know people in Peru, I know people yeah. in America, I know people in Canada, I know people all over the world. But like, I was like, I don't know anybody like in. I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure it might have even been Nigeria. And I feel really bad for not knowing what country it was. I was right going to say Nigeria, but I'm so geographically stuffed that I'm like, yeah. I'm probably going to butcher this, and it's probably in some other random part. Um, yeah. Let's go with Nigeria. Who, who knows? Yeah. Somebody who knows, but I'm um, listening. Yeah, 
but I was like, that's so fucking cool. I've reached, oh. a, I feel like I've reached a pinnacle and I'm like, I want to do more of this. This is cool. Like, I've obviously helped somebody that in, you know, in a foreign country like that. I, I definitely don't know. And that, that for me was a big, like, yeah, this is cool. I, um, I don't look at stats because my, my partner, he's like, he more so looks at that kind of stuff as well. And he, he wants his podcast to be bigger. And then I think like, I get so vibed of just talking that I just am like, mm. I just want to upload it to share. Like if anybody listens, I don't really give a shit. Um, mm. But when I get bogged down in it is when I'm thinking that I have to schedule this stuff in and then I lose the why until I jump on a call and we start chatting and I'm like, oh, fuck, this is why I'm doing this. Like, fucking love it. Like, it's not about anything else but that connection and mm. if it so happens to you know yeah get to another person or other people do listen to it cool if nobody does it's okay like I think it's I think because it started so much as a process of like just wanting to understand people for myself that it was like in that way it almost felt like my own little project but giving back if anybody so chooses to listen and um whatever that it doesn't really worry me if it um gets big or not it's just my my whole mission is like to add as much value as I can so when I hear people like you and I hear your story I'm like well fuck like people just need to hear that <laughs> like how do we get that out there come on <laughs> yeah I know exactly what you mean yeah. unfortunately I'm cursed as a man by being very analytical and like looking at the numbers and I'm like I'm, I was a, a math geek at school so I'm like yeah. anything to do with numbers I'm like numbers 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 ah. I want to see this grow I want more numbers like one so it's, two. Um, oh, fuck. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's um yeah it's, it's been it's been a really cool journey to be able to 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 do the podcast and to to see yeah. it grow um and like it's, I guess it's, it's more of a privilege to be able to get people to open up about these sorts of things and have these yeah. sorts of conversations because like we said like you know people just don't talk about this sort of stuff ever don't. unless they're prompted to or unless most of the time people don't talk about it unless they're desperate yeah. because they need to finally get it out there and get it off the chest so yeah. it's it's so cool to see people sharing these sorts of stories with that sense of confidence is like yeah. I'm doing this because I want to help people. Dude, we should host it. I don't know what your free time is. Mine is like minimal, but um, we <laughs> should just host some sort of situation where it's like, come to the fucking cafe. We're just going to have mental health something. I don't know, sitting, having coffee and just let your story out or whether it's just us catching up. I feel like I need to actually see you in person and have a coffee with you anyway and just go like hey dude like how's life checking in on you even if it's five minutes or something and um to do yeah. that be awesome yeah yeah it would be awesome let's do it yeah let's make it happen um i'm yeah. going to start to wrap this up before i have to actually get changed for work and go and get yeah, to I've, get to meet I've more got a little <laughs> yeah I've, I've got a little clock and i can see it's like holy shit we've been talking a long time already you know, i could well, keep going i'm buzzed yeah, so i'm just like you are <laughs> awesome <laughs> um where can people actually find you where is the best spot to have cats like this to just say hey to see where your story is to see what you mm -hmm. do all of that juicy stuff give it away um okay so i've got um i only have a few social media accounts i'm i I'm not a big fan of the old socials, um, yeah. but they do serve a beautiful purpose in terms of sharing a message. Yeah. Um, so you can find me on my Facebook. It's open. My personal page is just Joey Odell. And there's a picture of me, my little girl, and um, my wife there. Um, so you can see me. Yep. <laughs> and um, <laughs> then um, I've got a few business pages and stuff like that, but I don't really pay attention to them. Um, but the, the best of the place on socials is in Instagram. Um, which is at Joey underscore the underscore nomad. Um, that's my handle on Instagram, but probably the best place to find everything is um, I just developed my own personal website recently and it's um, J-W-G-O-D-E-L-L. So J-W-G-O-D-E-L.com. And there I've got all the work. Can you spell Odell? Yep. It's O-D-E-L-L. -L. 
Nice. Yeah. Um, and it's got all the work there that I do with um, the workshops with school, um, my public speaking, um, my courses, my EP7 stuff, my podcast is all posted on there as well. Um, it's probably the best, like, central location. I don't know why I did that, but... For people listening, <laughs> they won't be getting what like this a, is. But... An, an explosion <laughs> thing with my hand. It's like... Blades of glory. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so with your little course that you were speaking about mm. earlier in this episode is that out yet no it's not um i'm posting a lot up about it on my social media at the moment especially on instagram on my yeah. stories there um we're looking at relaunching that around mid-august and um, we're going to mm. open it for um for people to come and join in um in a couple of weeks time cool. but um we want to allow because it's a first time we're launching um we want to allow enough time to be able to take people through a journey and um, we have a a quite unique way of um, bringing people on board like we i don't just want to sell people into into it with if it's not going to help them yeah. um so we've got like a, a visual experience that we take people through um that roughly takes usually about one hour um to go through and we do that over a zoom call and it's basically taking you on a personal experience of what we're actually going to to do and to to almost give you basically a blueprint straight out without actually joining like yeah. it's the, at the end of the day it's like the more people we speak to the more people we can help yeah whether you come and join the course or you don't join the course yeah so it's if if it sparks an interest there's um there's links to to book in a chat and we can i'll take you through this whole visual experience and it's um it's a nice journey and it's, it's something i love to do it's like it's, it's like a podcast without the recording and just yeah. sharing and helping. it's that bit more intimate and focused in that sense of like you're really giving your energy and attention to the people who have given theirs to show up and I love that yeah. I love that it's not a you must come on this course and that's what I think mm. people get so freaked out about with a lot of network marketing mm. stuff or coaching stuff that it's like feeling like they have to versus it being a choice of like, no, I chose to come to Joey because of the feeling that I got with him or the content that he was offering or George or whoever else is in your team versus like yeah. that desperation. You must come on because it's new and support me. It's like, support me if you want to support me. <laughs> yeah. Rather than yeah, like it's, come. <laughs> it's, it's all about helping at the end of the day. Look, like yeah. everything that I'm trying to do is about helping helping the world and and helping people it's you yeah. know if if that's done through a podcast if it's done through a course if it's done through a conversation or if it's done through me speaking on stage it's you know yeah. that's where it's done and it's yeah. that's that's the mission is to to just help people through life really yeah i feel like that's a nice place to wrap it up unless you've got any final messages or words that you want to give to our audience um there was something that popped up earlier is that, you know, it's something that Einstein um, quoted that is, is not shared enough is that you cannot um, solve a problem with the same person that created it. It's one of my favorite quotes. And mm. it's like, if you're in a space where you're feeling like things are getting tough, this is an opportunity to be invited to, to, to learn something new and to make a change for yourself mm -hmm. you you're not going to be able to get through it by being that same person that you have been in the past it's it's an opportunity to reach in and that doesn't mean going spending thousands of dollars on courses and all this sort of stuff it's just yeah. sit down start to listen to podcasts start to listen to um people talking empowering speeches um anything like go to events meet people network get out there to so you can start to you know make that that not necessarily a, a supremely educational change, but your, your state's starting to change. You're not that same person that just does whatever you did anymore. It's like you, you, you have to make that those small changes for yourself. I love that. It actually mm -hmm. ties into your whole mission of the, I do want to use the word suicide. I don't know why I do. Mm -hmm. It feels more powerful, but it's like it is that death of that part of you that you're willing to let go of. It's like the, the conscious mind choosing to do that and um yeah i love that quote as well that's such a such an awesome message 
to leave it with. I appreciate your time, your energy, your stories. Man, I am so keen to meet you in person. And I feel like I just want to give you a big hug and have a, yeah, just sit down and have multiple cups of coffee with you and, and hang out. Awesome. Good. Cause I'm a, I'm a massive hugger. So that's, that's great. Good. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much for the invitation as well. It's, um, it's been really, really cool to have this, this conversation. It's, it's actually nice to be on the other side of the, the microphone for a change. Right. So it's, um, yeah, it's been a blessing. Thank you. You're so welcome. There'll probably be a take two of this, I'd say, just with um, Joey's energy. Let's make it happen. Cool, cool, cool.